Hello and welcome to Projector, and on this episode, Charlotte Kirk has to prove that she's not a witch in the new film from the director of Dog Soldiers and The Descent, The Reckoning, which I saw last year at Fright Fest. Set in 1665, Grace, played by Charlotte Kirk, is forced to bury her husband Joseph, played by Joe Anderson, when he commits suicide after contracting the Black Plague. Struggling to take care of their baby daughter and pay rent for their home, her landlord Pendleton, played by Stephen Waddington, tries to sexually exploit her, and when Grace defends herself, Pendleton convinces the locals that she is a witch. Grace is soon captured, imprisoned, and put on public trial by the feared witchfinder Moorcroft, played by Sean Pertwee, and Grace must find the strength to endure the tortures and indignities. The Reckoning is the new film from Neil Marshall. Fifteen years ago, Marshall was the darling of the British horror scene, having created two great low-budget features, Dog Soldiers and The Descent, the first being an entertaining mix of action, comedy and horror, and the second being an incredibly claustrophobic, terrifying experience. It's those two movies that got the attention of Hollywood, but Marshall stumbled with his first big-budget studio outing, Doomsday, which was basically a mashup of all the movies that Marshall loved on video store shelves back in the day into an incomprehensible mess. He returns to the UK for Centurion, but that was a box office flop, and Marshall has spent much of the intervening decade working in television, including on Game of Thrones. He eventually returned to cinema screens in 2019 with the reboot of Hellboy, which had a legendarily troubled production, and Marshall has actually disowned that movie, even though he still has a directorial credit on it, because there was so much studio interference, and allegedly there were days where he didn't even show up on set at all. Marshall has instead steered the big comeback talk to The Reckoning, which is much closer to the low-budget movies that he started his career with. The Reckoning is a movie that Marshall also co-wrote, along with his fiancée Charlotte Kirk. If the name Charlotte Kirk sounds a little bit familiar, then it's not for anything that she's done on screen, but more for what she's done off screen, including notably having a role in several high profile Hollywood scandals that resulted in the departure of major studio heads. And that is a whole can of worms I'm not even going to touch here. It's a very long, complicated subject. If you really want to look into it, just Google it. However, what I will say is that if you are a Neil Marshall fan hoping for some kind of comeback or a return to form for the director, The Reckoning definitely is not that movie, unfortunately. In fact, it's actually genuinely quite embarrassing. The premise in the opening act of The Reckoning is not without promise, especially given that it was clearly intended to be a quite timely tale. Not just in the accidental coincidence of it being set during a pandemic, which obviously the filmmakers could have never planned for, but also in the fact that it's clearly intended to be a Me Too influenced story. It's one of a number of recent films that has used this repressive, superstitious time period as the backdrop for stories of female empowerment. So I'm thinking of likes of things like The Witch or even something like Wolf Walkers, but perhaps the movie that really came to mind all throughout The Reckoning was last year's Fanny Lie Delivered, simply released as The Delivered with Maxine Peake. But that movie is a lot more successful in its ambitions as folk horror than The Reckoning is. And of course, knowing Marshall's knowledge of the genre, he's obviously harking back to classic touchstones like the Vincent Price movie Witchfinder General. And given the story and the general setup and the fact that Kirk co-wrote the script, it's definitely clear that there are elements of Grace's story that are meant to be somewhat biographical, that they're obviously meant to be parallels with her own experiences, if you're aware of what happened with Kirk, especially given that Grace is often the subject of abuse by men, especially those that offer her sexual favours and try to sexually manipulate and abuse her. And so that is clearly in the text of the movie. It's not me reading into it. It's obvious that the creators have put those experiences into the movie and are commenting directly upon them. And that would be interesting if it was actually a decent movie. The first, most immediate problem with the film is that Charlotte Kirk isn't a very good actress. She looks like a leading lady. I'll give her credit for that until she opens her mouth 
and then the illusion is shattered. The problem is that Kirk doesn't have the presence or the ability to carry a movie by herself, and that only becomes more obvious when she's at the center of it in virtually every single scene. The problems start right from the outset because Kirk feels wrong in the role and often anachronistic. She doesn't carry herself in the way that a woman from this time period would. Grace instead feels like a modern woman that has stepped out of a time machine. And Kirk is visibly struggling with the material right from the outset. Marshall has written some great leading roles for women in his previous films in the past. You have to look at things like Doomsday and The Descent, which both had female leads. But this definitely feels like a much weaker part. This is clear clearly a vanity project. You get the feeling that Kirk and Marshall conceived this project as basically an acting showreel for her, to prove that she is a real actress and that she can lead a movie by herself. Watch her act, watch her scream, watch her grimace in pain, and it becomes really transparent that's exactly what it is. Not helping matters is that Kirk is less medieval and more Maybelline. This is the kind of movie where all the extras are covered in muck and grime, but Kirk, no matter what she goes through, no matter how many tortures she has to endure, no matter how many sleepless nights, she looks perfect every time she's on screen. She's got her makeup on, she's got her hair quaffed, Nothing is out of place. Nothing even seems to get on her nighty. Nothing whatsoever. She is sparkling clean throughout, and it becomes unintentionally hilarious. It really feels a bit vain in that respect, honestly. It's very rare to see a film that so transparently lays bare the real intentions behind the project like this one does. That being said, though, Kirk isn't the only bad acting on display here, because Marshall's strongest suit has never been directing acting, but I don't feel like that's ever been quite as much of a problem as it is here, where virtually the entire supporting cast are really over-the-top and campy in a way that feels inappropriate. It feels like the cast of EastEnders hang out in the London dungeons. It really does not suit the material at all, and they're all playing caricatures and grotesques. The only person that knows what kind of film they're in is Marshall regular Sean Pertwee. He strolls in halfway through as the witch finder, and he is at least a bright light in this movie. He is actually devouring scenery. He knows that he is a mustache twirling villain and then some. And at least Pertwee's presence, at least brief remind you of earlier, much better Marshall films than this one, and then you remember which one you're watching, and then you grimace. It's a real shame to see Pertwee and Marshall reunite on such a project, and it just goes to show how much the director has fallen from grace. Oh, Grace, like the title character, I see what they did there. But those qualities are only furthered by the script itself, which is utterly terrible. The most immediate issue with it is that Marshall doesn't even know what story he's trying to tell, or more specifically, what genre it's supposed to be in. At its most basic level, this is a drama about persecution and injustice. It evokes the likes of something like The Crucible, for example. But that's not the movie that Marshall is trying to make. Marshall is trying to make a horror story. So instead, this is a square peg trying to be forced into a round hole, and it does not fit, no matter how many times Marshall tries to make it so. It's very obvious in the first act, where Marshall interjects these completely unnecessary jolts and jump scares into the movie, not aided by the soundtrack being pumped up to ridiculous levels, almost distortion level, just to get something out of the audience. It does not need to be 
in this story. It should be that the horrors of it speak for itself, if that's the intent. But instead, Marshall tries to keep forcing the story into the genre's conventions rather than the other way around. And the most obvious example of this is in the sequences where Grace is returned to her cell and she has these hallucinations and dreams where she has sex with the devil. That happens in this movie several times and it's really a case of utterly confusing, totally misguided imagery because Grace is supposed to be an innocent character throughout all this. This is not a story of someone becoming corrupted like this. This is not someone falling into sin, but that's exactly what's happening here. And so it confuses our understanding of the character, but also it's completely superfluous to the story. It feels like empty padding material, but also why does this film have gratuitous sex scenes and nudity in it? Why does Kirk keep stripping off all throughout it? Why do we keep getting close-ups of her backside? It feels really, really our place and completely unnecessary. It feels at times like Marshall is trying to make this into an exploitation feature, but at other moments it's taking itself completely seriously. And these sequences add a fetishized male gaze to what is ostensibly meant to be a feminist story. I don't think so. Then again, I guess the movie needed something to fill out the running time because there isn't actually that much story here. The movie has a first act, and then in the second, it doesn't really know where to go. And instead it becomes this repetitive hamster wheel of torture, dream sequence, torture, dream sequence, over and over again. It quickly becomes incredibly tiresome, especially because there is no real story progression here, unless you count the fact that the tortures get increasingly personalized and sexualized as they go on. Marshall, to his credit, at least doesn't linger on the actual details of the torture. Most of it is left to your imagination. But even so, the focus of it still feels lingering in a lot of ways, especially because it gets so kind of salacious. It does feel actually a little bit uncomfortable to watch, but not in the way that it's intended, but more because it just feels like an excuse for Kirk to scream harder, as if it was a real kind of precursor to proving just how worthy she is as a performer. And then in the third act of the movie, it changes genre again. Suddenly it becomes this revenge movie, and you've got Kirk swanning around like she's the bride in Kill Bill. This not only goes completely against the first two acts, the film. It feels like the conclusion of a completely different movie, but it violates the reckoning's internal logic. Grace has literally spent days being tortured and sleep deprived. She has been impaled through her feet, and yet she's literally running around with no sign of pain and injury whatsoever. And the plot has to do these ridiculous contortions for this to even happen in the first place. It's meant to be empowering, it comes across instead as risible, and the action and fight sequences later on are so stiff and awkwardly performed that sometimes they're unintentionally hilarious. There's a sequence where someone is set on fire and they jump out a window to their death, which is so goofy, I find it hard to believe that anyone wouldn't laugh at that moment. Not helping matters is the budget was obviously so tight that most of the gore in this film is CGI splatter, which is deeply, deeply unconvincing. And it's so sad to see Marshall, who has so often used practical effects, forced to resort to this. I will say, though, in Marshall's defense, that he does have one good practical gag involving someone's head getting crushed under a cart. But then he commits a major directorial faux pas because a character watching that event through the power of editing, looks like they haven't moved position in 24 hours. Did they move some scenes around or something? Because that definitely got a laugh out of me. It's like Marshall has lost all sense of his judgment somewhat. And really, this does feel quite 
embarrassing to watch, especially if this is meant to be a feminist tale, because honestly, it feels like a very male take on it. Well, I will say one thing about The Reckoning, it is still better than the Hellboy remake, because at least it is identifiably a Neil Marshall film, for better or for worse. Just a very very bad one. Marshall has shown himself in the past to be a very talented horror director. Some of the suspense sequences that he's held are some of the best in the genre period, and I want to see him return to his former glory, but judging by the reckoning, that seems to be a long way off at best. The acting is terrible, the script is dreadful, and the direction here is actually quite poor. I was really astounded at just how bad this film was, and how clearly it's just made for Kirk and Marshall and no one else. This is a seismic misfire that tries to be a feminist tale, but is exploitive and sexualized. It goes against itself repeatedly. It doesn't even know what kind of film it wants to be. It doesn't feel like Marshall is actually staging a comeback here. It feels like he's actually making a bid to become the next Miller and Paul W.S. Anderson. Oh, and one more thing. All the publicity material for this movie cite it as being from the director of The Descent and Game of Thrones. Come on, Marshall has made more than one decent movie or one recognisable film to credit him with. And just because he directed a couple of highly regarded episodes of a television show doesn't suddenly make him the director of Game of Thrones. He didn't create that series. What a nonsense credit. If you like this review, then you can buy me a Kofi, or you can support my work over at my Patreon, where you can see my reviews early, among other perks, including access to my Discord server. But until next time, I'm Matthew Buck, fading out. Hey.